Hi, it's Martin and Arlo, and we're in the studio today to make the classic French pastry, pain au chocolat. Okay, so before we jump into making it, let's talk for a little bit about what this is, because pain au chocolat falls into a category of doughs. It's made with a type of dough, which is a very big category of things. And so I want to give like a little bit of context to it, okay? So look at this anthem. So here's pain au chocolat. Pain au chocolat is in the category of things which in bakeries we call viennoiserie, which means like things from Vienna. And the reason that we call it viennoiserie is because uh, there was a really well-known bakery in Paris that had an Austrian baker who became famous for the croissant, right? That classic French croissant. And sort of down through time, we've come to refer to things in this category as viennoiserie. It's a kind of a strange word. We also call them though, laminated doughs. And the reason we say laminated doughs is because basically it's in a class of products which are um, layered. You know, it has dough, butter, dough, yeah. butter, dough, butter, dough. It's kind of like puff pastry, but the big difference is that puff is not yeasted, whereas this is all yeasted. It's leavened, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, so Viennoiserie is a laminated dough. It is yeasted, and the origins are attributed to an Austrian bakery in Paris in the mid-19th century or so. Examples include things like, the greatest example of all is obviously the croissant, right? The croissant. You use the same dough to make croissant as you do to make pain au chocolat, believe it or not. It's another example of how in bakeries we try and be efficient with our methods. So we make one base dough and then we make 10 different things out of it, right? You can do that at home as well. So uh, other examples, pain au raisin and many shapes and toppings. I mean, there's so many examples of like fruit danish and all this different kind of stuff that can yeah. be made with croissant dough. Mm -hmm. Delicious, right? Some modern examples of things which people are making with um, viennoiserie or laminated doughs are things like the cronut, right? The cronut, the famous cronut. Uh, and also something that's become really popular again is coin amon, which is like a laminated dough that has sugar in between, which gets very crisp and caramelized. It's really good. So it's all about the dough butter dough. That's what produces the flake, and that's also what produces the crispiness, right? So when you're in France and you're eating that delicious croissant, or when you're in Norwich, Vermont, and you're eating one of our delicious croissants at our bakery, you're gonna make a mess. It should be messy. It should be like this cascade of crumbs. Um, and the reason that happens is because of the dough butter dough. So, a quick overview of kind of what the process looks like. And this is one of those things that it takes time to make a croissant. It's not uh, something that you can decide to make at lunch and then have by dinner. Uh, in most cases, there's some shortcutting, but it's challenging. So it begins with a mix. And then after some fermentation, you chill it down. And then you add in the butter block. And this is like the butter fence that's, that gets in there and produces the layers, right? And then you give a series of folds or turns for layers and you end up with this thing that's kind of like a sandwich. Some people call it the sandwich. But it's all of these layers, the many, many alternating layers of dough, butter, dough, butter, dough, right? And then you chill it down again and then you roll it and shape it, proof it and bake it. And so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna see some parts of that process. There's a lot to learn about viennoiserie and laminated doughs in general. So we're gonna try and be thorough, but at the same time, we wanna do this uh, in a relatively compressed fashion. So uh, let's go and play with some dough. Okay, so let's get into making the dough, right? Yep. So I'm not gonna cover the mix. The mix is really very straightforward, right? Um, you basically just put your ingredients into the bowl and uh, stir to combine if you're using a KitchenAid, use the dough hook. Um, and then you let it ferment for one hour. And then I think for best results and best flavor, um, you put it into the fridge covered overnight. You can either leave it in the mixing bowl that you mixed it in, which is a nice technique. Another technique is to actually place it onto a baking tray 
in a square so that it has sort of a squarish shape because we're going to roll this out into a square right now, right? Yeah. So that's what I like to do because it gets me started um, on the rolling portion of this dough. Okay. One of the tools that I use all the time when I'm making pastry is a tape measure. It's super helpful. You're going to see me use that more than you want to today. Okay. So this is the dough that fermented overnight. You can see that I pressed it out into a square shape. And the other thing that we need to have ready when we start to get this dough is the butter. So you remember dough, butter, dough, butter, dough, right? Okay, so I have my butter sheet here. Now, to make the butter sheet, what I think is the easiest way to do that, and this recipe, the roll-in butter quantity amount, is three sticks. Use three sticks of butter. And so, what I like to do is take one standard half sheet of parchment like this. Mm -hmm. I take my three butter sticks and I cut each one in half. Yep. And then I just put the sticks down. This is an eight by eight square, which is the size I want. Mm -hmm. And then I just fold the sides in that like that with the butter inside. And then once you have that, it's super easy to take a pin and just roll it and roll the butter into the corners. If it's fighting you a little bit, just wait, let the butter warm up some. And so that's what I have here. Now, I wanna show you something that's really key. It's one of the most important parts of this process. And croissants are very process-based. It's like, it's not, it's a relatively simple ingredient list. Yeah. What really makes the difference between the great croissant is not only great ingredients like great flour and great butter, but it's also really nailing the process steps, right? So this butter, we made the block and then we chilled it and feel it. Do you feel how it's kind of firm? Yeah, it's still kind it, of firm. It's still kind of firm a little bit. Um, and this dough is soft and so we want these two things to kind of be at the same consistency so feel the butter and feel the dough okay, yeah, yeah. Very dough's very soft butter is not so soft they may not get exactly the same but this butter needs to warm up some right, right. before it's ready to uh, roll into this block if it's cold and we try and roll it into the block you're going to see the butter break and sort of shard and if that breaks, then you have places where you don't have butter, dough, butter, dough. You just have dough, dough, right? And then you have butter over here because if, when you roll it out, we're going to elongate it, right? And if it's cold, the butter sort of breaks and it doesn't spread smoothly. So the moral of the story is that we need to wait a minute. This isn't quite ready, but I think it's a good illustration. So we're going to give this maybe five or 10 minutes to soften some, and then we're going to come back and do our lock-in. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so we waited for this butter to soften some, and yeah, feel that. Way different. Way better, right? Yeah. The other thing that can help it a little bit if you're having trouble um, is to just run the pen over it a little bit, and you can sort of help break it up like that, and it'll help soften it some. But I think that's in a pretty good place. So the next thing to do is to take this piece of dough, and roll it to 12 by 12. As far as croissant doughs go or Viennois Reed doughs go, this formula is on the softer end of the spectrum, um, which has its pros and cons. A stiffer dough will make a, more, uh, a better lamination. The layers will be more defined, but the yeah. problem is that when you're rolling it by hand, by hand, if you have a stiff dough, it makes it very hard to roll. And so, uh, you know, Pros and cons, like lots of things. This dough is really super easy to roll, though. Look how easy that took, like nothing, right? Okay. Let's see if I'm close to 12 by 12. So I've got an eight by eight block of um, butter, and I've got a 12 by 12 block of dough. So, it's about right. And then what we're going to do, we're going to dump this butter in. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the butter in, we're gonna sort of diamond it like this, yeah. and then we're gonna fold the butter oh, in, right? Yeah. So I kind of have to try and like lay it down there in a way that looks kind of even. Pretty good. It's like this should be farther down here. That's all right. What you can do is, good thing is, even if it's not perfect, don't sweat it, you know, don't worry too much. Because then what we're gonna do is, yeah, gonna bring the corners in. You See. can do that. And you wanna like kind of stretch it. Okay. Like that. So like stretch. Yep, yep, stretch. You're just gonna wanna cover all the corners, I'm guessing? Yeah, yeah, cover the corners. So it's like the first layer is done. Yeah, so now we have dough butter dough, right? And now we're gonna roll it out. Yeah, now we're gonna roll it out. Exactly. Same thing? We're gonna roll it out and we're gonna do um, two folds. We're gonna do two letter folds. So, maybe I'll do the first one and get it started and then I'll have you do some too. Okay. Okay? Mm hmm. And a little bit extra flour right now, just until we get it going, uh, is good. You know what, will you do me? Will you look in that end drawer and find me a pastry brush, buddy? Might have. And I start out with these sort of uh, pressing impressions a little bit. Got it, perfect. Yeah, you can tell how soft the dough is, buddy. You can tell how soft it is, exactly, right? So we're going to 10 by 20. And we're trying to make this uh, as much of a perfect rectangle as possible. And so I may stop and make sure that it's nice and even. In bakeries, we have something called a sheeter, which is like a, you don't know what a ringer is, but it, like, it's kind of like a clothes ringer from the old days, from the very old days, which um, it's like two rolls. Yeah. Which come very close together and press really hard. You've seen a sheeter work. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like a pasta roller. Yeah, it's kind of like a pasta roller, exactly. Does it cut it too? Or do you have to cut it? Like uh, the sheeter, most sheeters don't cut it, but they make them these days with cutters on them too, so you just roll it through and then it cuts. It's pretty. It's a pretty sweet machine, actually. Oh, I'm a little long. I'm a little long, but it's okay. And 10. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to give a letter fold. So we come down about a third of the way, right? Yep. And then um, I do have a little bit of flour, a little bit extra flour. And do you see me just taking it off? Yep. Because I want these layers to stick to one another, yeah? Mm-hmm. I want them to stick to one another. And I like it to be really neat. So there's that. And then I come in like that. So you don't always have to brush the flour off, you just it's like too It's much. just, you know, the flour that's mostly, where it has more flour is underneath where I was against the bench. Uh -huh. So as long as those, um, so that's really what I'm checking. Mm -hmm. So let's see how, so I'll grab a little bit. And then I do another one. So did you see how I rotated it 90 degrees? So it was, I was rolling on this axis, right? Yep. And I folded it. And then I do a quarter turn because now so then it's like ten inches like this. Yeah, now and it's ten inches together. this way and whoop, like that. Okay. Basically around there. Okay. Are you still gonna start? With yeah. So start with these things. Yep. And go down. You press pretty hard. Yeah, it's okay. And basically, what you're doing is you're ensuring that the layers are sticking together, kind of before you start rolling it. Yeah, you can go a couple passes there, no problem. Lopsided. It's okay. If it gets lopsided like that, it means that you're pressing, you know, a little bit too hard on one side or not hard enough, yeah. but you can sort of stop. The good news is that we're going to do this letter fold um, process like several times. So, there you go. So you just want to evenly press? Yeah. Maybe press one more time and then you can start rolling. And maybe you start in the center and you roll toward that end. Yeah. And you can, yeah, let the, let the pin turn in your hands. Check this out. Or roll your hands across like this. See how I'm just moving okay. across my hands? Uh-huh. Whoop, like that. And then I come down here. Mm 
It's about 24. We're close, aren't we? <laughs> that was fast. And then make sure, like, if you have these little lumps at the end, go ahead and flatten those out. Make it, you want to make it as even as you can in thickness from end to end. It's about 20. So we got Boom. Okay, so now do your thirds. Uh, yeah, it's like a third. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that's good. So a little bit less. No, you're okay. I think that's close enough. What do you need to do before you fold that? There you go. I see a little bit right here. There you go. Pastry is one of the things. It's like a model airplane, you know, like a paper yeah. airplane. It's like the crisper it is at every point, the more beautiful it will be. So that looks good. You fold all the way. All the way, yeah. You can stretch it a little bit, right? Yeah, you can stretch it some. Let's see if we're good here. Is it full enough? Okay, so it's full enough a little bit. So it's okay. And you can just go back here. A little press. Now go. Perfect. Look at that. This looks really good. And see how it's, the dough's looking nice and smooth? Yes. Okay. And then. So let's see what you get. Uh, I don't want to like, mess with the layers. If no, you're okay. That's it. So now what happens? Okay. Now what happens is that we let it chill for an hour, an hour or so, 30 minutes to an hour. It just needs to be dead cold before we deal with it again. So half an hour or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then we come back and we give it another, uh, another series of the same folds. We do two more of these letters, 10 by 20 letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's shape this croissant dough. Um, and maybe before we do that, we just quickly review what, what the steps were previously. So we mixed a dough, we chilled it until it was cold, we did our roll in with the butter, which you saw, and then we did a double set of letter folds, and then we chilled it, and then we did another double set of letter folds, and then we chilled it, and now we're ready to make our final shape. Now, for, to make the final shape, you go into it with this block of dough. It's a lot to work with at once. And so what we're doing, and this is in the recipe instructions, is we cut that dough block in half. And so this is half of that dough block amount right here. And what we're gonna do is, will you hand me that pen, buddy? That rolling pen, sorry. So now we're gonna do the final shape on the pan of chocolat. And what we need to do is roll this out to 8 by 24, which is pretty big, which is pretty big. So bear with me for a moment. You want this dough to be floating on the surface. If you find that it's not moving, make sure that it's floured underneath the dough, just a little bit, just a wisp of flour. So, and you know, you want to be as straight as possible with this you want to try and keep it from getting wonky. So I might flip it around some. If you find that it's really resisting you, um, put it on a sheet tray and put it in the fridge for 10 or 15 minutes covered. 
just take a plastic bag or a piece of parchment or something like that and just put it in the fridge or even in the freezer um, to chill it and let it relax some and then come back. Sometimes people get it, it starts to get sort of misshapen because it's fighting them, uh, like a pizza dough that you're having trouble stretching. Um, and similar to that, you just walk away for a minute and then come back. Taking like less than a quarter inch off the sides. I want a nice clean lamination. I'm almost exposing those side layers of dough butter dough. You know what I'm saying? Because right now they're all tucked in. But once I but now that I've opened them up, we're gonna see them when we cut them. Are you gonna do the same on here? I'm not gonna do the same on here because we're gonna roll it up and we yeah. won't see that side. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it down the middle. It should be about a four-inch piece on either side. If we were really being uptight about it, we could use a ruler. I'm not opposed to that. And then we need to get four pieces out of this. Because we're 24 and we want them to be six long. Does that look like about halfway? Close enough, yeah. yeah close enough. One, two, three, four. Four. Oh, no. No? no? Do it, just do it, just eyeball it, you're okay. Right there. That's perfect, yeah. Go for it, yeah. I'm totally messed this up. No, you're not. Just go, go with confidence. Zip, there you go, okay, perfect. So, now we have our pieces which will become pound of chocolate, right? Now we just need to roll them up. Pieces are roughly uh, four by six ish. You can do them four by four too. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Chocolate sticks. I like these batons, these little um, dark chocolate pieces. And there are a lot of different ways to put these in. Some people will put two in and then just roll them up. Um, in my training, we always did them once like two sticks, and then we put them at either end like that. Um, if you don't have the sticks and you have some good chocolate, um, you can just have a little work around. I've got these Valrona pieces. Perfect. So with these, what you can do is you can roll towards the center. On both sides, like this? Yeah, so, okay, so you're good. All right. So what you can do is go like this. And then you can go like that, and then you kind of bring them together, and then they sit. See how that works? You want to do some of those? Sure. So you're going to proof them with the chocolate inside, too? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Almost has like a palmier shape to it. And then we give them a little press. I like that. Uh, shaping method because they don't come unrolled. You know what I'm saying? If you shape them like this, they don't come unrolled because the ends are inside. I do this correctly. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm okay. very excited to eat these. Very excited. So these need to proof for at a minimum an, an hour. It's warm right now and it's humid and I think they're going to proof for at least an hour possibly even an hour and a half. Um, so you just keep checking them. So it's Martin and Arlo and we have our pan of chocolate out of the oven. 
And so I took them out and I let them cool a little bit and then I just hit them with some confectioner sugar. Um, you can do that or you can skip it, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think they're pretty good. I think that, you know, working with laminated doughs is especially challenging. Doing it at home without a sheeter is another challenge and doing it in the summertime is yet another challenge. So, um, you know, go with patience and forgiveness and they're really super delicious and they are worth the time. So thank you for making them. We had a good time. Oh yeah. Totally. And Arlo said he could eat the whole tray. Easy. Uh, easily. Okay. They're so good. They're still a little bit warm. They'll get even flakier as they mm, cool some. So good. And really good. Chocolate huh? is like tart. Mm. Super good. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back soon with another video. We'll do croissants. So you have your pain au chocolat and we'll do the plain croissant from the same dough. So I hope that you and yours are well and enjoy the croissants. Happy baking. Cheers.